Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, Steve Malone talks about what happened before the blast. I was down there two days before. I've spent the entire day right on the mountain or right next to it. And we knew that was a risk. That was one of those risks you take. Here he is on May 16, 1980. Getting the data and doing the science is part of what you do. It's why he made many trips to the mountain, a mission that began because Malone, a seismologist, saw the activity. Well, the first no significant earthquake was on March 20th. A week later, he was on the front page of the paper with the headline, Mount St. Helens eruption soon. He spent long hours in the lab documenting the details, how the mountain was changing. That along with continuing earthquake activity was telling us that the mountain was, was going to erupt. The problem was how big. After nearly two months, he found out. Beware of your sort of forecasts of the worst case condition because it may be exceeded. And that's certainly what happened at Mount St. Helens. The estimate had been that a blast might go as much as 10 kilometers, you know, say six miles from the volcano, and it went more than 30. The plume reached higher and the damage went further than he expected. And there were so many fatalities, including a, you know, a colleague, was very sobering. As another anniversary approaches, he considers the lessons learned. The advancement of science that's taken place over 38 years is, is a lot, understanding just the whole process. Now it's possible to look at where earthquakes are occurring and how they're changing with much more detail. It's a tool helping scientists with Hawaii's Kilauea volcano. How big those explosions could get is part of the, the, the real issue. As Malone watches the latest volcanic crisis, he thinks about the one that happened 38 years ago. Many of the things that were developed uh, almost on the fly during the St. Helens period uh, have evolved and improved and are used today. The Hawaiian volcano is a very different type of volcano than what we have in the Cascades. Cascades are more prone to violent explosions, and that's not typically the case with volcanoes in Hawaii. Back to you.